Alright, so it's finally time for me to take a look at Transformers 2007. It released July 3rd, 2007, being directed by Michael Bay. I really enjoyed this movie when I was a kid. It was a fun movie. Hell, I even still have my posters from the movie, but sadly the sequels were boring shit. So I'm curious if I'll still enjoy this movie. Wait, what? I'm not reviewing Transformers 2007? I'm reviewing a shitty asylum ripoff! Damn it! Well, I guess I'm not reviewing Transformers, and instead I'm reviewing Transformers, which was released by the Asylum on June 26, 2007, so that it can confuse parents into buying the movie for their kids. Yeah, truthfully, these past five seasons, I've been avoiding reviewing mockbuster movies, mainly because of the Asylum, because I really don't want to review this kind of crap too often. As the Asylum make cheap, shitty, rip-off movies, but anyway, the movie's about Transmorphers taking over the world, and human rebels have to take it back. So yeah, there really won't be any fighting. So it's just best that you play with Transformers or something, because it'd be more fun than watch these movies, and the effects would be much better. Anyway, let's get into the movie. Alright, so the movie begins with the backstory. Anyway, the Transformers were sent to Earth from Cybertron in 2009. Five years later, they took over. Anyway, the living humans there wear leather. Yeah, seriously, for some reason, everybody in this movie wears leather. I have no clue why. It won't really help at all. You should probably just wear body armor. I mean, that might slow you down a little bit. Just wear light body armor. I mean, I doubt it'll do much, but it might help at least somewhat. I mean, it'll do better than leather. I mean, that's probably fake leather anyway, but I doubt this movie has enough money for real leather. And you may be asking why I'm not wearing my leather jacket right now, and I'll answer that. It's because it's hot as fucking shit. As the machines are coming close to their base, they're gonna need to do a suicide mission as blah blah blah. They go outside into the rain. In their leather jackets, and if you didn't know this, leather can be damaged by water, I mean, sure, it takes a lot of water, but yeah, there's a lot of water out there, so those leather jackets would get pretty fucked up, I think, even if they're fake leather. And, yeah, why not just wear something different that's better for the environment you're in? Like, I don't know, body armor! This place is worse than I thought. Uh, I don't see anything, movie. All I see is the graffiti behind them, which isn't that bad that's all over the place. If you're gonna say that the world is fucked up, movie, show, don't tell. Anyway, there is a brain scan that scans human making one of the nose bleed. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why it only affects like one human out of all of them. I guess it doesn't work on all humans, but then why use it? I guess it's to figure out where the humans are, but why not scan them all so you can easily kill them? Or find out a way so you can scan them all. Anyway, the Transformers attack the Rebels. Fire! Come here, we have engaged! Repeat, we have engaged! And there are a few problems with this. One, that gunfire looks like complete shit. Two, Jesus Christ, that Transformer looks like absolute garbage. I mean, this movie came out the same year as Transformers, well, it still looks pretty good, but especially compared to this, which, Jesus fucking Christ. I'm actually kind of glad there isn't no robot fighting in this movie, because I think the producers knew that it would look like complete shit if they were to try it. Anyway, I think they die, they need to promote somebody who is seen as a traitor. This mission requires someone that will follow orders to the letter. If something happens... It will lead the machines right back to us. The lady doth protest too much. And, uh, why was his editing there? She was just sitting there. You could have had her behind her and had the exact same effect. And I wouldn't have to complain about this shit if you did that. Because that would not have been that bad. Why do you have this shitty-ass editing? So they bring back the guy who was put to sleep for being a traitor. And don't ask me why they put people to sleep instead of putting them in jail and killing them. Well, I guess they don't put people in jail because 
Well, they can't really have a deal because of the Transmorphers, so why not just kill them? It'd probably be cheaper and easier. But I guess if they killed him, they wouldn't have this guy in this movie, would they? Anyway, he is awakened after five years. But basically, nothing has changed for him. I mean, there's a little bit new tech, I guess, but instead of that, everything is the same it really was from the five years before that, I guess. Anyway, I guess it's better to be frozen because it's better. Of a world where you can see the sun. And every day, I bathed in its warmth. Then why would you put people in a paradise if they're supposed to be punished out, whatever, as transmorphers? And now you've brought me back to a world that is cold and dead. Oh well, the Iceman wants his men back and she'll only allow one to be brought back. And I guess fuck the others, because Asylum does not have enough budget to have any more of his men in this movie. Anyway, they're gonna need to lead a mission, but they're kinda pissed that the girl convicted them. I won't lie, these two are actually kinda entertaining, and mainly the one guy who actually voiced Thor. He's actually pretty entertaining in the movie. I mean, it's mostly just acting, not the writing. The writing is still shit, but... He does actually put in a decent performance, and his interaction with his second command actually isn't too bad. Yeah, this is gonna be one of my only things that I enjoy about this movie, isn't it? Anyway, uh, there's something about this one girl marrying this girl who was with this guy before he was frozen. But truthfully, I don't give a fuck, and I doubt you do either. But he goes to talk to her, and anyway, he needs his side and his recruits. Hesitation guarantees casualty. When I give an order, you act quickly and decisively. Sergeant Tucker, step forward. Hit me, sir. Wait, what? Hit me. <gasps> oh, uh, 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 okay. Execution is equally important. Do not hesitate and execute every order fully. Oh, oh, okay, uh, well, actually, uh, I gotta admit, I actually kinda like this scene. But one girl does pretty good against him, so... Anyway, this girl wants to be in the mission to cause destruction, as they're gonna get ready to fight. Uh, they are sentient, which means that they, uh, uh, think for themselves on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, but they do have overriding commands, which, uh come from a central computer system. And, uh, man, can you, uh, stop, uh, stuttering, uh, please, uh, did you go to the, uh, Jeff Goldblum School of, uh, acting? Anywhere they're getting ready for an attack so they can get a fuel cell, which they can't take to the base because there's a tracking device in it. That's uh, exciting. Figure out a way to carry three guns and ooh. Stop with these shitty ass transitions! The guy wasn't even doing anything! Just cut away like a normal fucking movie! But there are some girls who are afraid to go on the mission and are cowards. And uh, who were those people again? Were they in an earlier scene? I don't remember. The people in this movie are just really forgettable. So they might have been in an earlier scene, but I completely forgot about them. And if they weren't, who the hell are these people? Anyway, this girl beats the shit out of this bitch for being a bitch. This war has been going on for hundreds of years, and we just now decided to fight it today. Wait! Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. That makes no goddamn sense. First off, the world would be much more fucked. Now, sure, I didn't get to see very much, but there's clearly still some buildings standing, so... Yeah, it'd be way more fucked up because of the damage the Transformers did. And two, the humans likely would do a lot of incest truthfully because, yeah, there's not very many humans left, just a couple of them. So likely incest would happen, which would make them a little bit more fucked up looking. And three, that makes no goddamn sense because, yeah, it just makes no goddamn sense. Anyway, it's time for the mission to begin, so they go out and go attack some machines. Jesus Christ, okay, I just gotta say this again. The CG in this movie is goddamn fucking awful. It is fucking garbage looking CG. Truthfully, if you can't do CG right, then just don't do it at all. 
So anyway, some action has, but some things are fucked up, and there are only ten left, and two of them are on their own. And that gun design looks awful, truthfully. They don't even have triggers. How in the hell do you shoot them? But at least they got a transmorpher they can open up, and yeah, they're cyborgs. Which is different compared to Transformers, who are fully robotic. These assholes shouldn't even be able to transform because, yeah, they'd probably destroy their squishy bits. But the Transformers find them, so they gotta go. But the commander is really worried about her life, but uh, Thor here promises he will save her. And it turns out they need to combine an android with a fuel cell, but the girl won't work, so they'll need somebody else. Oh, and this guy has a robot, which wasn't even important until now. I've always known. Wait, so if you knew, then why wouldn't you suggest yourself in the first place? Oh, I understand now. It's because they can shock the audience or whatever. Of course you have. You are self-aware. And if he does this, he's gonna die, and he's gonna do it. Wow, that is an obvious green screen. Why is that even necessary? Ah, I see. So it's so they can show the planes that are there. Why is it necessary to show the planes then? Just have it take place in the corner of the room. Anyway, he gives the scientists this shitty gun as Transmorphers are making their attack. Because the dumbasses took the Transmorpher back to their base even though they knew that the thing had a tracking device in it and that they would be found out. Why would you take that to your base under any circumstance? I mean, sure, you do have a chance to win the war, but why take the risk? Just take it someplace else. You likely have more than one base or some place where you can hide out for the time being. Anyway, they gotta fight the Transformers and oh no, it looks like this girl died. Oh, uh, oh no! Yeah, truthfully, I really don't give a damn. But actually, she's still alive. But again, I don't care. Truthfully, I don't think I would really care about anybody in this movie dying, really. Anyway, though, they gotta stop the Transformers, but there's a turret. Which can only scan biosignatures, which means the one guy can get in there easily. And no, there are no Transformers there taking guard, which... Yes, they should have left at least one guard there, just in case. But the Transmorphers are fucking dumbasses. Anyway, it's time for this man to sacrifice his life to save the world. Damn it, of course the one actor that I kinda liked in this movie died. And no, it's 100% the actor. The writing in this movie is still complete fucking garbage. Anyway, they can see clearly now. The rain is gone. With it being a green screen, seriously, you guys couldn't just, I don't know, film outside? Anyway, that was Transmorphers, and that was complete shit. But yeah, that's probably not surprising. It's Asylum. Of course, it's gonna be low-budget shit, but it's boring low-budget shit. I was very bored watching this movie, and those effects were awful, especially the gunfire. Truthfully, I've seen YouTube videos with better gun effects than this shit. The only thing that I kind of enjoyed with these two, but that's because the guy I was actually trying was kind of entertaining, but the script was still shit for him, and while I did enjoy him, he didn't save this movie at all, and I'm still gonna give this movie a 1 out of 5. Okay, after this shit, I need to watch something good. I'll... I'll see you next time.